Hi, Phil. I appreciate you joining me today. This is such a timely topic about credit, uh, especially in terms of what's going on in our marketplace today. I know you're in the U.S., but over here we've got a lot of bank tightening up. We've got programs disappearing. And what I really think is, and the reason I really wanted to get you on is, this industry needs to change their definition of the word help. And what I mean by that is, uh, so often I hear the phrase, you know, in our industry, we couldn't help them. And what they right. really mean by that is we, we couldn't do a mortgage for them. And to yeah. me, help means someone leaving my office or getting off the phone with me with better information and in a better place than when we began, regardless of whether I did a mortgage for them or not. And typically, as you know, when you can't do a mortgage for them, it usually comes down to credit. And right. Phil, and for my audience, his name is Phil Tyrone. Uh, you're the author of Seven Steps to Seven a 720 Credit Score. Right. And, you know, credit's usually front and center in everything I do. So, Phil, go ahead. Let me tell my audience how you got into it and what you do. Well, Mark, um, I, first of all, I appreciate you, you, um, you having me on here. And, and, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm actually sitting on my desk, uh, on my bed right now because we're getting, my family's getting ready to move from this home. So we're in, we're in transition. Well, so I appreciate for, you joining me. I know it's, oh, uh, you're a busy guy. Oh, no, I'm, just, I'm, I'm thrilled to, to connect. And, um, you know, Mark, as, I, as, I, as I've told you before, I, I started in the loan business. And the reason why I wrote this book is because it, it didn't make sense to me. I had clients who had, had, you know, had millions of dollars in the bank and were perfect borrowers, but were overpaying on their loans because of their credit score. And, um, and so that was the first thing that I was just noticing in the back of my mind saying, this credit's like... I know how important it is, but it really came, came to light when I walked into a bank one day for myself, and I deposited a check, and the lady said, I'm sorry, Mr. Tyrone, you're overdrawn in your checking account, and I was, first of all, I was embarrassed that she would even say that. I was like, can you, like, keep it down a little bit? Like, you know, don't, like, announce that to the world, and she said, you know, you can apply for overdraft protection. I said, perfect, and I remember thinking to myself at that moment, um, or she said to me, you're going to have to run your credit to get overdraft protection. $100 overdraft protection line, that's all it is. And I said to her, I, I thought to myself, well, surely I'll get approved. I mean, I, have, I, I pay my bills on time. I mean, you know, I, of course I'm going to get approved. Well, she came back to me and said, I'm sorry, Mr. Tyrone, you're denied. Your credit score is too low. And, and, and right then, I mean, it, it was just, it made me think. I left there thinking to myself, if my credit score is too low, what am I overpaying on all my bills, like my clients? And I did some checking. You know, I was in the mortgage industry, and I still am. And I, uh, in the mortgage industry, I looked at my credit report and my credit score, looked at what I was paying and what I could pay, and I realized I could literally save five to six hundred dollars per month on my mortgage, not including car or car credit cards. And that's when I realized I need to figure out how to become a master of credit for myself. And then others. And what I did is I, um, I learned everything I could on credit. I mean, everything I could do. I studied books. I used my clients as a, you know, a credit. I used my credit. I talked to the credit bureaus. And what I really realized is that this system is so messed up, it makes absolutely no sense. Because things you would think that would raise your credit score, like, um, like you know, closing an account, or I had this one. I had this this one account that I didn't even realize went to collections from like five years prior. I paid it off, thinking it's going to help my credit score, and it hurt my credit score. My credit score went down when I paid a five-year-old collection, or however many years old it was. And and that's when I realized the system is so messed up. And I really started learning that there were certain things you could do that impact your credit score big, you know. 25, 50, 100 points per gig. And there's certain things you can do that have a negative impact or, or impact your credit score no points. It's just, it's a, it's, it's a complete waste of time. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wrote Seven Steps. And I started literally to just share this information with my clients so they, I could do better loans for them and I can save them money each month. So when I raised my credit score, I ended up saving $502 on my mortgage per month. Mm -hmm. And, and I took that money and I just started putting it in the bank and I started saving it. And, and I'll never forget when, you know, a year and a half, two years later, 
um, with the money in the bank and my high credit and my savings, I ended up buying a rental property. And I realized after I got that rental property, I would never have been in this position if it wasn't for my credit score and deciding to make that change. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's the two-minute version of, of how I did this. And five years later, you know, I spend a majority amount of my time right now talking to people like you, spreading this word because, quite frankly, you know, I'm not going to stop until the credit laws are changed because, quite frankly, it is the easiest way for banks to legally rob the average person. And what they do, they just steal from them because they use the credit laws to their advantage and the average person doesn't realize that they're overpaying two hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a month. Well, so. you know, I feel that personally I know a lot about credit, but when I looked at your report and, and, and after speaking with you, it, it's incredible. Like and, and like we spoke about earlier, everybody needs it. You have to have it, but nobody yeah. tells you how to do it. And yeah. that's kind of where we are today. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Mark. It's exactly where we're at. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, go ahead, please. I was going to say, so tell me a little bit about what you can tell my clients. Obviously, somebody sitting there, they're watching the viewers out there. They're saying, listen, I love it. I mean, I want to know more about credit. How does it work? What's the secret? Because nobody's going to tell me. And and I'll also put the link after we're done for my clients to watch that mm-hmm. video where you actually, I, 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 it blew me away when you walk into the bank with the little pen with the hidden microphone and video and you actually talk to a bank manager it's crazy right. i mean it was black and white right there oh they have no clue what's going on i mean nobody does i mean it, it, it's the funniest thing if your banker doesn't understand it, it's not going to work so yeah so you can put that on your on your website and also what we'll do is we'll give a, a report and, a, and a, this 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 book that i have and we'll give free to all your watch your viewers fantastic um, phil and, and i and i've read it and i and i love it i mean the information like i said i thought i knew everything and it just blew me away so you know it's, oh, it's great it's, it's great oh no it's it's my it's my pleasure i want to get this information out but you know i mean like there's certain things you know we can go through um you know just some of the key things to think about for in sure. terms of you know for in terms of your listeners you know you know everyone's heard that the first thing, I, you know, out of, out of the gate, everyone heard that, you know, if you can't max out your credit cards. So say, for instance, you have a $1,000 credit card, you can't have it at $1,000 to current your credit score. And, and yes, that's the case. We know that. In our book, we say keep your credit card balance no more than 30% of your, your credit limit. But what most people don't think about is that if your um, – um, if your um, – you pay off your bill each month. You still have to keep it, keep your charges per month under thirty percent. Because if you don't, when you go get that car loan, go get the home loan, go get whatever. When we run your credit report as a lender, any type of lender, they look at your credit report in a snapshot of time, mm-hmm. and that's going to determine at that moment what your where you're at with your credit card your score. <clears throat> if you're maxed out or not, yeah, yeah and that'll determine your score. So I get a lot of people say to me, oh, I don't have to worry about paying, I don't have to worry about keeping the utilization rate low under 30% because quite frankly, I pay my bills off in full and I just say that that's the wrong mindset and mm-hmm. that is the surest way to overpay. And matter of fact, one time I had a guy, had a $5 million home, I was doing a million dollar loan for him and he never had one late payment and one credit card was exactly that. He just shipped, sent in his $12,000 credit card bill. And but we ran his credit before the payment came in, and because of that, his score was seven nineteen, <clears throat> seven nineteen. And because of that, Wells Fargo wanted to charge him an extra five eighth in fee to get the best rate. Hmm. Five eighth in fee. That's fifty six hundred dollars on a million dollar loan because of one point on a credit score. What we did is we waited seven days, reran his credit report, and boom, that fifty six hundred dollars was saved. Hmm. I mean, just fascinating, eh? Crazy. Yeah. You know, another thing is, you know, everyone, or I shouldn't say everyone, a big majority of Americans in one capacity or another has had a bill in their life that they didn't realize. Like they got, they had an electricity bill and they got shipped, they, they moved and the, the mail didn't forward. So they, didn't, they don't even know about it. And there's a $22 collection that are on their credit report. And literally it's $22 or $50. I mean, Pay it in a second. You don't even care about it. But what people don't realize when it comes to the credit scoring world is that a, a collection that's over two years old 
mm -hmm. is having less of an impact on your credit score than a collection that is currently paid. So let me just repeat that. A collection that's over two years old is having less of an impact on your credit score than a collection that's if you pay that off right now. So what we talk about in our program, in our book, in, in, in our system is what to do with those collections because sometimes it's best not to pay those collections off because say, especially if they're going to you for a mortgage mark, you know, you're, they're going to have a, a big drop in their, in their credit score as opposed to submitting the loan with the collection on there saying we'll pay it through escrow or pull, we'll pay it to closing. Right, right. It's just one of those things that people don't think about because they don't know. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Um, and my last, just a, a last idea and then, you know, whatever, however you want me to, I can keep going. I just don't want to, you know, whatever you want. Um, you know, another big thing, and I deal with this all the time, is there's many credit card companies that do not report the proper credit limit to the credit card, to the bureaus. So what that means is you're running your credit report and you see your credit limit um, should be $10,000 or it should be $1,000 and the credit card company is reporting it at zero or 500 or whatever, 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 whatever reporting it. And statistically speaking, 46% of credit card companies report the improper information to the bureaus. Hmm. 46%. I mean, it's just staggering that they're allowed to do that. Well, the other number that uh, amazed me was your the the U.S. statistic that eight out of ten people you had reported or they yeah. had reported have an error on their credit bureau, and, and I run I run into that quite a bit. Where I'll you know I pull someone's credit bureau and I'll say, well, listen, Phil, did you know you know you have this on there, and they don't know. Yeah. It, well, the thing is, is in, in that statistic, eight out of ten people, eighty percent, that's from a United States Public Interest Research Group. Okay. Mm -hmm. This this forty six percent statistics that's from a Federal Reserve Board study. I mean, it is it, it blows my mind that this is possible. Imagine, Mark, if you were if you create if you had eighty percent of the time you you had errors on your client's application. Eighty percent. I mean, even forty percent. I mean, if 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 you're if I mean if if um if the bank thought you were making it five percent of the time, you'd be in trouble. I mean. It's once again, it just goes to show that the credit system is designed for the banks. Mm -hmm. It's not designed for the consumer. And that's why you can't, even, you can't even learn about this. I mean, the banks, the bureaus won't release this information. It's up to people like me and you to disseminate this information based on what we know. Well, and that's, back, and that's one of the major reasons I have you today. And that's one of the reasons why I always tell people, <clears throat> you know, I whether you use me or another broker, it's better yeah. to use a broker than to walk into your bank because oh. watch Phil's video at the end here and you'll see why. Um, oh, I mean, it's crazy. Oh, it's joke. They, don't even, they don't even have to be licensed like us. Yeah, I mean, it's I just, mean, it's, but I can go on and on about that. That's, so, all, that's so, a whole other 20 minute video. <laughs> so just to wrap it down, and of course, I'm going to put links to the book, the free book, which yeah. I'm real happy you're, you're providing. Two questions. Number one, what would you, if you if I had to ask you, what's the number one thing that you can do to for your credit? What would you say to some? I mean, I know there's tons, but what would you say? Right. So I'm gonna I'll take two points to that. And the first the first answer is finishing up on the credit limit thing yep. is making sure that your credit limits are being reported. And you got to get you got to get in the face of your banks if they're not reporting it. Yep. And if they're not reporting it, you got to get new credit cards. You have to do that. Okay. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, is um, you know, making sure there's not gross errors on your credit report. I mean, you know, I mean, th there are so many errors on your credit report that just, you know, are um, that that literally can hurt your score 50, 60, 70, 100 points. Mm -hmm. And then let me give you one more, Mark. Um, if, if you do not have three credit cards, you need three credit cards. If you have two credit cards... And I'm talking credit cards that are reporting. If you have two credit cards that are, are and you don't have and, 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 and you don't have oh, a third, yeah. you need a third credit card. Okay? And there's certain credit cards that help your credit. There's certain credit cards that hurt your credit. And um, and what I can do is give you a link for those two for, for your site. Okay.